All right, folks, education, and uh, you know that that is one major problem facing this country. Joining us now is a, a woman who has written a great book, a very uplifting book. Uh, we could all use some uplifting news uh, every so often, and why not now? And joining us is Naomi Schaefer, uh, Naomi Schaefer Riley. She's a New York Post columnist and author of Opportunity and Hope, Transforming Children's Lives Through Scholarships. And uh, one of the uh, young men who has been Benefited through the uh, scholarship uh, program detailed in that book is with us as well, Silas of Farley. And welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Naomi, uh, talk about uh, uh, the book. Talk about the 10. I guess you, you follow uh, 10 uh, beneficiaries of the, the scholarships that you write about, uh, and, and, and you, you, you give us their stories, and they're, they're all great stories. Yes, well, Steve, thanks. Uh, as you know, um, you know, inner city education in America is in a horrendous state these days, and there are parents all over the country clamoring for alternatives, for ways to get out of our public school system. And uh, scholarships for private schools are one of the major ways that this can happen. Um, so I uh, was fortunate to have the opportunity to go around the country and visit with some scholarship recipients uh, from North Carolina, where Sar Silas is from, uh, all the way to uh, San Francisco. Um, and I heard some really inspirational stories about how these scholarships provided their parents the power to give them the education they deserve. And, and this is uh, so problematic, as you mentioned, uh, inner city schools especially, uh, but the public school system in this country uh, has needed uh, total reform, in my view, for many, many years. Let's uh, ask you, Silas, um, uh, where did this scholarship uh, enable you to go to school? Uh, I am from a large family, I'm the youngest of seven children from North Carolina, and the public schools that we were zoned for in our hometown of Charlotte were some of the worst in the city, and my parents couldn't afford private school education, so they did the heroic task of homeschooling for many years. But when the scholarship fund became available to us, we were then sent to uh, private Christian schools that were connected to our family's churches. So those were the best fit that my parents saw where we could be both academically and spiritually nurtured. And uh, it worked, right? Very much so. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing now? I'm now a dancer with the New York City Ballet here in Manhattan. All right, well, uh, Naomi, um, how many kids uh, benefit uh, from the, the program uh, that you have written about? Uh, well, the Children's Scholarship Fund has helped uh, tens of thousands of children uh, over the last more than a decade that it has been available. Um, and CSF uh, has partner programs across the country. Um, but uh, it, what we really need to do now is move from these private scholarship programs, uh, which can only help so many kids. I mean, these are this is money coming from private donors, um, to a large-scale either voucher or tuition tax credit program uh, where people can, uh, you know, get the kind of tax benefits they need to contribute to these programs on a statewide level. We need the D.C. voucher programs to be expanded. We need Florida's uh, tax credit program to be expanded um, because there are so many children who are really waiting for these opportunities and, and it is a scandal, the fact that we have kept them waiting so long. Well, absolutely, and there's all kinds of objections and, you know, one of the uh, sad ironies, in my view, is uh, one of the first things that President Obama did was deny so many black children the uh, same opportunity that their siblings had by uh, t cutting off the DC voucher program and uh, where you had uh, the poorest uh, blacks in the worst schools in Washington DC some of those kids going to private schools on that voucher program he denied their siblings uh, the same hope and opportunity uh, and, and and you know what the media and unfortunately the Republicans too they're basically silent on this yeah, I mean, it, it is a real shame, and I have to say that, you know, if people looked at the results, they would see that, you know, Catholic schools, private schools generally give these kids higher graduation rates, better achievement, a better chance of going to college, and a better chance of, you know, getting a job afterwards. And so, I mean, it, it was really a win-win situation for the states and localities that have tried this. I mean, as I said, Florida has a statewide program uh, that has benefited now tens of thousands of children, um, and I think we really need to be Replicating that model across the country. All right, uh, and and talk about uh, Silas. Uh uh, some of the people that you knew and grew up with who did not have your opportunity. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm sure that there are a lot of horror stories that you could sit there and tell us, correct? Well, uh, I mean, 
not so much. We were very much involved in our, our church communities and our school communities and the, the neighborhood that we lived in, though it was zoned for some of the worst uh, public schools in the city, was actually a, a very nice neighborhood. So I wasn't right in the thick of mm -hmm. a lot of the turmoil that a lot of the inner city right. students around the country have faced. Right, some of the other students yeah. that I interviewed uh, really, you know, had a lot of stories about, um, you know, growing up in crime-ridden neighborhoods, you know, uh, drug deals were going on on the corner right around from school. Um, they didn't feel safe in their public schools. That's one of the things that's really, um, I think, you know, not talked about enough. Many parents simply want their kids out of inner city public schools because they don't feel like their children are safe during the day. The number of incidents of violence and crime that is going on inside the school walls. I mean, the metal detectors don't even begin to tell the story of what is going on in some of these schools. So I think, you know, really private school scholarships, you know, are definitely part of the answer here to helping parents feel like they can send their kids off to a safe environment during the day. And, you know, uh, we've had the uh, head of the uh, Archdiocese uh, for schools here in New York State on this program. Catholic schools, which have done so much good and so much wonderful work for so many children, they're in dire need now of help themselves. No, absolutely. I mean, um, you have a lot of schools where they are simply, um, I mean, parents can only, in, in these situations, can only pay so much. And even a few hundred dollars, I mean, they are working so hard to just contribute that much money. Um, but the Catholic schools are educating kids at a far, uh, you know, lower cost than the New York City public schools, for instance. Um, and, and yet, you know, they have a lot of empty seats. And it's, it's time that we, you know, help them financially to make sure that those structures, those schools that have been there for over a hundred years serving many immigrant communities um, can continue to serve in that role. And certainly the vouchers and the tax credits that you uh, talked about uh, and write about would certainly go a long way in doing that, correct? Absolutely. And it is shameful that, you know, New York did not manage to pass the tax credit program uh, this year. And, you know, one can only hope that, uh, you know, things improve for next year. You think teachers unions play a big part in all this and the problem? Oh, absolutely. They play a huge part in it. I mean, they have, uh, you know, an interest in the status quo, and they see, you know, the, the problem with the unions is, you know, their interests are not aligned with the children. The, the unions see public schools as a jobs program for adults, not a program right, to educate right. our children. Absolutely correct. Naomi Schaefer Riley is a New York Post columnist and author of Opportunity and Hope. Pick it up, be inspired, and learn. And uh, we also thank uh, Silas Farley, a scholarship recipient uh, who's doing such great work now. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, uh, nothing more important uh, than educating our children. And one day we'll have the right kind of education reform, just not happening right now. We'll be back with more of the Steve Malsberg Show on Newsmax Television.